Thanks for stopping by to see what I'm up to today. Today I'm at the beautiful Charlotte International Airport. Again, on reserve. I don't know, I must have been a naughty pilot. So I'm sitting at the airport, held captive, and I thought I'd do some videos to bring you guys up to date on what I do when I ain't here. I live in two RVs. One is, I call the bus in Phoenix, and the other is the Green Ham Machine in Charlotte. That's my own crash bed, and I keep track with the Victron app. Here it is in real time, 88% charge, the batteries, DC power, 80 watts, 216 coming on the solar, there's a temperature gauge in there I've added, and there's GPS for geofencing. And I'm able to keep track of all the input and output. Victron provides these nice charts for anything you want to keep track of. I'm able to keep track of the last two days, the last 30 days, the solar in, my power usage. It's very handy. Any metric regarding the electricity, whether it's battery, the inverter, DC out, you're able to keep track of. And uh, I haven't even touched upon everything that's available. Here is a view out the side door of the green ham machine. It's a work in progress. There's tools everywhere. So sorry about the dust. We're under construction. But that leads up to my installation of the Ubiquity Unify system in the green ham machine. I've installed lots of Cat5 and Cat6 that uh, also complement my remote radio system, an AP wireless system, several switches, and of course, a good router. Besides the remote radio system, the ethernet cable allows cameras to be installed, which of course are of the Ubiquity Unify family for security and protection. With the Ubiquity router, I'm able to have several sources of ethernet, internet, so that if one fails, I can always fall back to the cellular modem. There is no room for it, but of course I had to have it. A ham's best friend is his 3D printer sometimes. Lots of applications for a 3D printer. If you don't have one, get a friend who does. I've been interested in LoRa long range communications on the 900 megahertz band for a long time. It's a free band. It's ISM, and I've even fell a uh, victim, dipped my toes into the helium mining of the LoRa Crypto. And here's my installation. That's a Yagi antenna up there on an MFJ antenna that I ordered from Amazon. I've attached this antenna to the side of my green ham machine with uh, materials you'll find at Lowe's or Home Depot for fencing. I'll put a little piece in here right now. This telescoping pole is the MFJ 1965. It has 11 sections. I'm only using nine of them right now. When it's fully extended, it's 63 feet. And when it's collapsed totally, it's seven feet tall. Again, I'm using Messi and Poloni 13 millimeter. And if you see where it ends at the near the top of the trailer, you see I have a pigtail and the wires are running directly into the trailer. This is how I fix that. I picked up this solar cable entry from Amazon and it solved the problem of getting the wires into the trailer. I'm going to wrap up on this guy. So I'm interested in Laura all the way around the Internet of Things, the Things Network. I have a gateway that's just TTN, and I have a gateway uh, helium miner. And uh, 900 megahertz requires a good cable so uh, to avoid the losses. So that's why I think the MNP13 is going to do the trick, and it has done the trick. And that Alpha, ALF, as in Foxtrot A antenna, is doing the trick as far as the Yagi goes. I'm actually able to pick up stations and transmit to stations to the northwest and also to the southwest. So I'll do another video here soon. If anybody's interested, thanks for stopping by. See you next time.